So if you're just starting out in chess and you maybe you're not a post beginner or you're an early intermediate player and you play E4, what should you do against the Sicilian? Right, massive question. And uh, it's a massive, massive area, but I'm going to give you a couple of tips of what I'd suggest, uh, you know, in, against the Sicilian. Okay, let's have a look. So first things first, would you avoid the Sicilian? Would I recommend avoiding the Sicilian? That's actually what I'm doing. I'm avoiding the Sicilian in sort of these little online things that I'm doing, these casual games in between other things, because in my own personal circumstances, you know, I've played the Sicilians before and I've learned a lot of the openings. And, you know, it's just a massive black hole of, of chess study. Now, were I to come back in chess, personally, I would, I would be avoiding the Sicilian. And I'll show you how you can do that. And you can play an opening that's possibly not very good, but your Sicilian player will not be expecting. However, I don't recommend people do that. I recommend, you know, you take the Sicilian on and, you know, you learn a lot about chess that way by playing these positions. Uh, so what I would recommend is getting an opening repertoire book. Right, and one book that I do recommend is Tim Taylor's Slay the Sicilian. And why I recommend this book is because it basically gives you setups against uh, the Sicilians. So rather than giving you, you know, hundreds and hundreds of lines or thousands of lines uh, to successfully play the Sicilian, it gives you setups and positions and structures. And one of them it gives you is this Bishop E2 setup, which is a favorite of Karpov. And, you know, I used to play this. With, with success over the board, you know, I wasn't losing because of the openings, you know, I, I wasn't maybe winning because of the openings either, but, you know, I wasn't getting blown away uh, from the positions by adopting Tim Taylor's approach. And now the Sicilian is so big and there's so many different areas that, you know, it is a bit of a minefield. And I was getting caught out, going out into tournaments with little opening knowledge, playing E4, taking on the Sicilians. But I wanted to do that to gain exposure to chess positions and to improve my overall game, you know? I don't mind going out there, playing, losing games, learning from that experience and moving on. And I was losing and drawing and winning games by you know, taking on the Sicilian approach. So I'll just show you the basic outline of, of Tim Taylor. It's not going to be effective against every opening at all and you'll face in the Sicilian. You'll need to get the book. But I do recommend, if it's not this book, then some opening book or some sort of like structure to play against. You know, what I mean by structure is rather than memorize, trying to memorize 500 lines, which is just ridiculous and not practical, getting some opening setups against a popular, you know, uh, areas of the Sicilian. So let me just have a look. At, let me just show you that so sort of basic setup. Okay, so this is a typical Karpov game in Sicilian as featured in the Tim Taylor uh, Slay the Sicilian book. So the approach that Tim Taylor recommends is this Bishop E2 on move 6. So Bishop E2 on move 6. It's not the most critical, most aggressive lines, but it's quite flexible. Uh, and you, know, you can basically play this standard setup against many of the Sicilians with with uh, you know variations in the in the styles, obviously. Uh, so the intended plan for Karpov is the Castle King side, and then you know possibly play an f4, f5 push, and to took the king away in the corner uh, in in most variations. So that is the approach I would recommend as a Sicilian. You know, getting a structure book. That, that's like the Tim Taylor book. There are probably other books on the market that do a similar thing. You'd have to look around and, you know, play around that. But it is going to take a lot of time, but it's still better than drilling opening lines. You know, I don't recommend drill, drilling opening lines uh, in particular until probably you're a lot stronger, maybe 2,000 plus, I'm not sure exactly, but somewhere on that, that ball, ballpark, I think, uh, I would recommend. So that's what I recommend. So I will show you what I'm going to play against the Sicilian if I were to take up chess again. And don't laugh, because, right? you know, it's not the most the uh, the most aggressive opening. In fact, it's not on the top 10 list of moves played against C5. So it's probably not very good. But Black's not going to be expecting it. And I'll explain okay, So why. disclaimer, I don't recommend you do this. Right, but this is what I'm going to play against the Sicilian or possibly play against the Sicilian were I to make a comeback. So I have played this over the board and I play this online uh, in little games. And it is crazy and it's not to be recommended. But the reason I'm, I'm actually doing this and, and you'll, you'll see uh, the reason now. So what the hell do I do against the Sicilian? E4, C5. I haven't got the time to study because I'm writing detective novels and doing things like that. I'm not really playing chess. But were I to play chess again, then what I will play in the Sicilian is not on any of the opening books at all. It's not in the databases. And I will play Bishop D3. What the hell? 
<laughs> right? Bear me out. Don't, don't switch off just yet. Hear me out. Hear me out. Right? So I play Bishop D3. Just looks absolutely crazy, right? Yeah, obviously does. Looks terrible. But my objective in playing this move is to actually try to gain a D3 Roy position. Because, you know, if you've seen the D3 Roy videos, that's the opening that I really, really like. And in about 40% of positions, I can get an E4 opening playing Bishop D3. Right, and the other 60%, you just get a, a bit of a crappy cramp game, but I can live with that. So let's have a look. What I'm looking for is for black just to sort of continue. I'm going to play C3, E5 comes on the board. I've achieved what I've wanted to achieve with this opening. Uh, what I do is drop the bishop back, and we're now in an E4 setting, E4, E5, D3 Roy. Right, and this is what I've adopted a few times successfully. Uh so yeah, I'm just going to flick through. This is an actual game. I'm going to flick through this game just to show you what I mean. So queen e2, right? If you've seen the d3 roy, because I want to maintain the pawn in e4 and play for f5 like in the d3 roy. And this is achieved in this particular uh, game. Tempo on the bishop, also mentioned in the, uh, the other video. Bishop, you know, knight on to f5. Like, wow. Okay, I'm going to quickly flick through this, but I've got a setup that I'm happy with. Tactic there. And I'll quickly flick through the rest of the game because I'm now a piece up, yeah. Okay, so. There's a nice tactic there. So it's a threatening checkmate in this position, so I could ignore the uh, attack on the bishop with this move. And yeah. All right, so if you don't get a, uh, you know, an E4, E5 sort of position, I just play some random nonsense, right? You know, I'm used to doing that. So for here's an example. You know, I'm fishing again for the E4, E5 setup. Doesn't happen. I just play chess. And this is just a blitz game, you know. Uh, oops, wrong one. <laughs> right, that's an example setup. Let's have a look at another one. Yeah, so I don't get my e5 position, so I just play chess. And, you know, this is just, like I say, this is just another blitz game. But I, I would just end up trapping the bishop here, and yeah, whatever. Yeah, I'll just quickly flip through. But it's kind of irrelevant. The main point is that from my own point of view, really what I, I haven't got time to study it at all. So I would kind of play this sort of this way and get, get a kind of... Uh, Hope for you what I call fishing for e4 e5, and if not, just play a random game. But at least both players are out of of the opening, you know, from like move two, really. If if uh, they don't play e5, which will benefit me playing if they play e5. If not, it's just a random, probably a bit cramped, a little bit crap position. So don't recommend you doing that. But from my own point of view, that's why I do that. All right. So uh, take care. Goodbye. Thank you.